the design brief says we must design a uh, data flow diagram in order to simulate a Schmidt trigger. Let's start a new flowchart. Uh, those are our inputs and our outputs. All the C's are inputs, B's are the outputs. That looks fine. So we're going to start off by realizing the Schmidt trigger is an analog input digital output device. Okay, we're looking at the analog input. Analog input, firstly, we're going to see is the value less than 1 volt. Now, 1 volt, if we look at the lower limit there, we see that this goes down to 255 as a maximum. So, what it does is it takes the supply voltage and it divides that supply voltage into 255 units. So, 1 volt will revert back to, if we say that's 5 volts, divide 5 volts by 5, that gives us 1 volt there. So that 255, if we divide that by 5, we get 51. So if we go to 51, then we see that 51 is my lower limit. But we want to see that it is in the 1 volt range. So there, is it in the 1 volt range? If it's yes, then it is the low value. Right. So we're going to add another one to check for the high value. And let's say it has to trigger at 4 volts, so 255. Uh, minus 51 is 204. I've worked that out in my head. If I made a mistake, I apologize. So there we've got the lower limit at 204 and then the upper limit at 255. Two hundred and four. Two hundred and four. Okay. So if it is in this range, that means that my output must go low. So that's a yes value. So that's a no value. So that's got to go there. I'm going to take this and set my output low if it goes below the 1 volt level. So if it's below the 1 volt level, yes, then it has to switch low and then it has to return to the top and restart all the testing. If it's not below that value, then it has to test whether it's high and if it is in the high value then it must turn my output high which output low zero so that output must be zero let's just make sure yes so it's going to test and then it's going to see if it's high or low so if it's high then it has to return to my high state and once it's done there it's going to return to there so let's see it starts test if it's low if it is low then it's going to go and indicate that it's low if it's not low then it's going to see if it's high if it is high then it's going to return there but now what happens if it's between those values, then it has to stay where it is. In other words, it's not going to do any switching. It's just going to return as per normal and retest our input. So let's quickly run this. 
Uh, no, B1 is an output. That's not going to work. Let's test C0 for that one. And let's test C0 on that one as well. So there's C0. So if we run the simulation, we see it doesn't know what to do yet. So if we go to C0, right click on it. We can see its value is currently between the high and the low setting. So if we change this to high, now it's going through the high and we see B0 is turned on. If we change our setting to below 51, then it runs through the low and it's turned the output off. And there's a simple Schmidt trigger.